There is an art to living. A simple truth that can be learned from noticing the small, interconnected systems of nature. The birds, bees, flowers and fruit. It's all connected in synchronicity. And so are we. We grew up in the rainforest, below the shifting mist and harmonic bird song. A few years ago, after our dad died, we moved home and began a journey of healing the earth and ourselves in the process. Our time nestled in these gullies has taught us a lot, but most of all, we have remembered a way of living that is both simple and profound all at once. It is the art of living with nature. It's time to share something truly life-changing. For this past year, we've been working in secret, pouring our hopes, our truths, and our inspirations into this, a book that is written from the depths of our hearts. We are so excited, proud, and honored to share this with you. It is part memoir, part meditation on the extraordinary resilience of nature, and every aspect is created by our hands, hearts, and minds. You can pre-order it now by following the link in our description, and this helps so much to get the book out there and into the world. We could spend an entire lifetime analyzing each page of you, but instead, welcome to the book series, where we will begin to unfold all of the pages of our secrets of you. The stories that we tell are shaped by our life in nature. It isn't always easy, and since our return, we've faced hardships and unimaginable disasters. But in this journey of transformation, we have learned to connect, to create, and to care. Mostly, we've learned to find lessons woven in the simplest things, to see nature as a gift, and to live within this grand web. <laughs> Winter in the rainforest brings forests of flowers. The trees celebrate the cool season by illuminating the valley with deep pink hues. The fragile flowers bloom quickly before their petals fall to the ground again. Knowing that their colour is so fleeting, just a moment in time between the swirling seasons of the rainforest, I think that is what makes them so beautiful. The seasons have taught us that all of life is cyclical, that all that has gone will always come again. The flowers will fall and the sunsets will fade. Our lives too are fleeting and fragile like the petals of a magnolia, so we learn from their vibrance. They teach us to celebrate the seasons as they come and go, to hold vibrance and colour within, and to paint our own worlds with depth. This past week has been really special. We got to hold our book in our hands for the first time, seeing all of our work, our love, our stories and our beliefs be bound between these pages. We've been working for a long time on this book and it was written in the branches of old trees with baby goats on our laps between the monsoon and through every season of our life. It is filled with reflections, stories and personal essays. The photographs that colour the pages were lovingly taken by us, or mostly by our mum. The art was hand-painted by Julia, and the drawings and poetry were crafted by me. Honestly, sharing something so intimate with the world feels a little scary, but we've realised that there's power in vulnerability and growth in despair. 
So we've told our story from the very beginning. <laughs> Sharing the truth of every hardship, loss and dream. When we lost our dad, the idea of caring for the land and living alone in the rainforest seemed impossible. But we can only imagine him now, with a big smile on his face, seeing this book that tells our story with such raw and powerful honesty. What follows are the lessons and teachings of nature that we have found here in our rainforest home. A sharing of knowledge, skills and stories. See each sunrise as a grand painting and each sunset as an unseen expression from the earth. The empty sky is a blank canvas and your empty mind is a vessel to be filled. Paint with the courage of the sky's bright pinks. Dance with the grace of the last light in the clouds. Learn from the earth's creative ways and fill each moment with art. Even the simplest acts can become art. When you look at the world through creative eyes, you notice. Suddenly, the smallest things hold the greatest meaning. The magnolia's sweet fragrance fills the valley as they flower. And we want to share this moment. To honour our senses and to create something from this extraordinary flower.
a breath of fresh air in a market. I'm stepping away from a silver spoon. Oh my goodness! The taste of my lips of a new found blue. I'm stepping away from all. With spring just around the corner, it feels like a time for new beginnings. The garden is a big mess at the moment, but we're inspired to put in a lot of love and plant lots of flowers, herbs and vegetables. I always love growing flowers for their beauty, but sometimes I get carried away and forget that there's actually more practical things to grow. This year, we want to plant the garden with more food and hopefully each day get closer to being self-sufficient. For us, this means following many different practices. Our goal this year in the garden isn't to do anything perfectly. There is always going to be weeds. Instead, this year, our focus is just trying our hardest, planting a garden that nurtures us, the animals, and the earth. Nobody loves you. Everybody wants to. I can tap out our gardening is never constricted to just one ethos, but we like to pick and choose aspects of many techniques. Here in the subtropics, our seasons are very different from the rest of the world. We don't really have a typical winter, and the rainforest brings a lot of summer rain. We love the holistic approach of syntropic gardening. Its main goal is to reforest the planet, and this ethos of viewing your garden within the larger picture of nature is super important to us. We also follow permaculture practices across the whole farm, seeing us, the animals, the garden, the fruit trees and the whole world as one big system all working together. This year our main gardening goal is to plant lots of things that grow well in this climate, to plant more bananas or even coffee, these sort of things that are suited to the rainforest. But of course, flowers are still in our many plans. Not just for their beauty though. Their pollen draws in pollinators to the garden and encourages biodiversity. I can't believe a chipping hoe is our best tool for digging a hole right now. We need better shovels. Look, there's a tiny strawberry. Gardening and sewing are so similar really. When I create, I like to think of the fabric like the land, to work with it and not against it. I use old doilies and sheets that were no longer appreciated, and from them, I try to reimagine their beauty into something that will be appreciated forever. Today, I'm making a top for Julia, so I'm picking natural tones and patterns, as well as some beautiful vintage lace. Like our ideology with gardening, I believe that sewing is all about creating something with the whole world in mind. When I sew, I think back to the past, and I imagine when these old, discarded materials were first created, whose hands sewed each threads, and the love poured into them. But I also think forward to the future. Will this piece live through trends? Will it last? Will it biodegrade? And then I think to the present. I focus on the joy of creating, on my hands crafting my vision, of each thread coming together.
I always love crafting something for someone else. As I sew each stitch, I imagine my sister wearing this top for years to come. When I think about this, suddenly each detail holds so much meaning. I use this old 100 year old hem stitcher to add little details. It's super hard to use and each time a stitch breaks I have to re-thread it completely. But it's so worth it. Its details match and honour the old doilies that I'm using that were probably once made with the same machine. Oh 
It's been such an emotional week here, finally announcing this book with you. We are just so thankful to each of you. This global community that came together as we told our story gives us hope more than anything else. Without this endless support, we would have never had the privilege of sharing our story, our love for the earth, and our hope for the future. If you had told us this would happen when we first started our channel, we wouldn't have believed you. We were so shy at first, but as our audience grew, we grew too. It's been more than a year of secretly working on this massive project. We filled the floor with images and writing ideas, and of course got plenty of help from Nymph the Tiny Goat. <laughs> this community is so special to us, and we are just so grateful. Thank you for your support, and if you can, please pre-order our book in the link in the description. We just can't wait to share it with you. And of course, thank you so much to our patrons. These guys were in on our secret a little bit earlier and this community of online friends always makes us feel so grateful. And the music in this video is by Indira Elias, who grew up just over the mountains, creating the most angelic sounds. She's been with us since the beginning too. 